Hello everyone, Derek Floyd here, IK Multimedia. Welcome to another edition of DFlow's Audio Toolbox. This is the segment where we interview great industry specialists that use our products every day to stay creative and engaged. As always, we have great special guests to talk about what they do every day, and we always give away a free product at the end, so stay tuned till you get to the end of the segment. I also want to let you know that if you enjoy this content, please hit us with a like and a subscribe on the channel so when we put up new content, you'll be the first to be alerted and be able to watch that great new content that comes along your way. So before I get started though, let's talk about who we've got and what we're giving away today. Our product we're giving away today is actually one of my favorites and it's called Sample Tank 4. This is an amazing workstation I've been using for years and I know that anybody making music, songwriting, production, this is a must have tool for any arsenal. Sample Tank 4, you're gonna check it out. Now, the guest we're having today is a good friend of mine. He just happens to be a songwriter, producer, arranger, you name it, he's probably been involved. And he's been working with artists like the gospel artist Marvin Sapp, the award-winning Yolanda Adams, He's even produced tracks for Beyonce and of North Tony Braxton. And one of his main court, main um, people that he works with most of the time has been this gentleman here, award-winning artist, producer extraordinaire, Kenny Babyface Edmonds. So what I, could you guys help me introduce this great friend of mine, Mr. Tony Dixon. Tony Dixon, you there today, brother? Yes, I am. How you doing, brother? Man, good to see you, brother. What's going on out there? Thank you. Everything is good, man. Just navigating, but making it. You know what I mean? I, I love that purple. See, we got the purple thing going on. My purple room. You got right, the purple right. sweatshirt. I like yes, it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. You must have got the memo. That, that's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I sure do appreciate you coming by and just stopping by and talking to the subscribers out there. You know, you and I have been Absolutely. friends for years, man. I mean, yes, sir. how long we go back, man? Like eight, oh my nine, God, ten over years? 10, yeah, <sighs> over 10 years at least. Yeah, it's been, <laughs> been a long, it's been great though, man. It's been a good ride, man. And you've been yes, an IK sir. fan almost all that time. Yeah, absolutely, man. I've been using the, the product since I got introduced them probably early 2000s. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I've been rocking with them ever since, man. There's a lot of great stuff, a lot of great products in there, and they're, they're always evolving and growing. And that's the thing that's been one of the main things that's always kept keep me stuck and around, sticking around. You know, it's just been a lot of great products. Man. Wow, wow. And I think yeah. we met at Nam, didn't we? I yeah. think. Mm -hmm. That's why I said it might have been '99 <laughs> or 2000. Yeah. <laughs> And Jeez. you know what, man? The industry is small, so you meet somebody, yeah. you go, you better be right because you're gonna see them again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. That's where I got that term "musical chairs" probably comes from. Yeah. You don't know who's gonna be where next in the next little bit, man. So, you just never know, man. You never yeah, know. Man. Well, man. Again, thanks for stopping by and talking to us uh, about your products that you've used. We're gonna talk about Sample mm -hmm. Tank Four, but before we get to there, I want to talk mm -hmm. a little bit about about you. And, and where you mm -hmm. come from, what you do, how long mm -hmm. have you been in the music industry on a serious level? Okay. Well, yeah. Um, well, my music career probably started back in 98. I was a, I was a student at Hampton University, um, actually 97. And um, I, you know, I was working with people like Teddy Riley. I got introduced to Teddy Riley while I was out there. And so that was kind of my introduction to the music business. Fast forward, I moved to LA and, um, I was doing um, a lot of work with Brian McKnight and um, who led me to meeting Justin Timberlake and working on NSYNC and that led to, you know, more and more projects that I got to work on. So I always kind of said my official career probably began when I was able to have my first check and didn't have to go to another job. <laughs> probably about, nine, about 2000. Yeah. <laughs> so that is so years. real. When you get yeah, that man. first check and you ain't got to go work at the regular job yeah, anymore, you don't have to then go back. you're doing it for real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Otherwise it's still a really cool hobby. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you're still my side like, hustle yeah. until i get that chance basically basically <laughs> i love it i love it yeah man so so when did you think okay this songwriter thing is what i want to do did you always know you're gonna be a songwriter no man i I'm, i i got into it because it was a it was a great hobby that i enjoyed to do and it was a creative thing that i, I i've always i'd always loved music since i was a kid and i didn't understand and understand the business um, as a teenager, really, I didn't understand that being a songwriter and a producer could actually be a career. I was just always under the assumption that the artist wrote the songs and maybe there was some producer that did it or they did it, they did it. And that was kind of the end of it. And I didn't understand the in and out workings of it. But then once I got, like I said, once I got 
the bravery bribe at 16, 17. And I looked into that. You could actually make this a job and, you know, people were doing it as a thing. I was like, I really like doing this and I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the creative process. And from the, from the beginning of doing it, it never felt like work. Wow. And then when I realized you could get paid for it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm all in. You're like, this is a win. <laughs> I can do this. Yeah, this is a win. I can do this all day and not, and then the bonuses I get to get paid for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Oh man. Did, what, did you ever have any other interest? Was it always music? No, it was always music, man. I mean, I, I, my degree is in business management from Hampton. So, okay, okay. Um, I, you know, I did that mostly for my family. My mother, of course, you know, she wanted to make. You got to get a real job, degree. baby. Yeah. You can't be out there yeah. playing no piano. Exactly, you got to get that degree and all that. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I was concerned about that. And I wanted to make sure I did it. So, I definitely did that. But, um, it was more. I think for me. I realized from the beginning that I had this creative bug in me that I just wanted to, you know, figure out a way to make a living doing. Um, and it was a balancing act because, you know, you want to make sure that you can provide for your family and yourself and all this can pretty consistently, but at the same time, you want to do what you love. And so that was kind of my journey is like, I did, I did a little bit of both. When I first moved to LA, even I'll tell you a quick story. Like when I first moved to LA, um, I wasn't making, uh, enough money really at, to make it a career. And so I took a job. I was working as a temp at this uh, insurance company in Westwood no. called Aon. Yeah, man. And I was, so I, you know, I, because at the time I was newly married. And so I wanted to, you know, make sure that I could uh, take care of the family or whatever. And um, so, yeah, I, I took a job and, but then I would travel at night from the, the, the office was in Westwood. I happen to have a good friend, um, a couple of good friends from Denver, where I'm from, named Silas White and Damian Smith. And they introduced me to Brian McKnight because they were working with Brian at the time and they were managing him. Oh, and wow. so they, yeah, they actually introduced me to him and um, which afforded me the ability to go into the studio and work with him at night. And so I was going to this job and I would work at night and then I would go to this job and, you know, work at the studio at night. And then once I realized that it was like, okay, the goal was, let me get a publishing deal. Yes. And, you know, I was like, well, once I can get a publishing deal, I, you know, obviously I'll make enough money where I can leave my, my job that I was at. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. The minute I, and I, I stayed at the job maybe six months, but all I did after work was go to the studio, stack up songs, make sure I got on specific projects, did whatever they needed me to do at the studio just enough so that I could, you know, get this publishing deal. And another good friend of mine, Anthony Nance, helped um, navigate me to that deal. And then from that point on, it was just like, I just promised myself at that point, if I make it, I'm never going back. And I promised myself that was, and, you know, fortunately I've been able to do it with God's help and uh, he's honored that. So I've been, that's what it's been about, bro. Oh man, that's a blessing story, man. And yeah. you grinded it out. You, a lot of people yeah. just think you're going to walk up and get a deal. No, it don't work that way. There's no, I don't work like all. that, man. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, the the overnight success takes usually about ten years. Yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? that's what I always think. Overnight success is never overnight. Don't that's, believe the yeah, hype. Yeah, it's never overnight. And, <laughs> Don't believe and the ride is it's it's like this. It's not you know it, it's a lot of ups and downs. It's never a straight shot. There's no one thing that can you can say it will be a big break for me anyway. Yeah. It's always been several little steps that have where you know where certain things happened that allowed me to go to the next step and so on and so forth. Nice. And I was man. able to make a career out of it. Yeah. So through all that, then you transition. Who were some of your uh, greatest songwriting influences? I mean, as you started to form your own, form yeah. your own style. Yeah, for me, I was a really big fan of you know not initially '90s R&B. So I love Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. I love, of course, Babyface and L.A. Reid at the time, and uh, Teddy Riley and guys like that. I was a big fan of um, David Foster. From, from the 80s, even more for me. And Who's still ridiculous to this day, David Foster. Yeah, he's, like, incre yeah, he's incredible. He's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all, that whole list is still ridiculous. So, yeah, 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 no they're, question. They're, they're, their yeah. talent hasn't left. Yeah, yeah, they're still doing their thing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no question. I mean, when Jamin um, Lewis hit, it was all over. Like, yeah, they took over yeah, radio I mean, for like five, six years. Like, pfft. yeah, they just won. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they just, they figured it out. They cracked the code or they, whatever. But they cracked I the love, code. I love the fact that they were able to what I loved about Jam and love about Jam and Lewis is their ability to not just create a great song, but they can create a great body of work yes. where it's fluid. It's, you know, it sounds like it's timestamp for a particular time, but all the songs aren't exactly alike, mm -hmm. but there's some continuity to it. And I just love the, the idea of being able to do that. I thought that was the coolest thing that they could take someone like Janet, 
and do an entire project and and not only that but evolve with her and help mm -hmm. her grow and you know and then you look at the other records they've done like human nature and mm -hmm. you know george michael and all these other things you're like yo like they get it you know and, and their music still stands now like it's still no relevant question. when you listen to it it doesn't sound yeah. dated yeah and I, I think what they, the subject matter has never changed. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think, you know, what, what we deal with when it comes to music is everybody wants to talk about love and, and whatever perspective they want to give it, it's still, it's still going to be a constant thing. And so that's, you know, that's what I love about them. Um, I was a huge fan. I am a huge fan of Prince and Stevie and Michael, of course. And um, yeah, those were my, my biggest influence, the Beatles. Yeah. Um, you know, so do you Billy feel Joel. like your sound is a meld of all of that? Yeah, you know what I mean? You know, I'm from Denver, so and in, in Denver, Denver didn't necessarily have, while I was growing up, didn't really have a sound. So it was a melting pot. And I grew up in the MT, MTV era. So it was, you know, you got to be inundated with Michael and then you would hear Depeche Mode and then you'd hear George Michael and, you know, then you'd hear some rap and you'd hear, all, and I liked it all. And I was just, I, I became a big fan of just great music. I didn't care the genre it was like if it made me feel good and it made me want to move or it made me feel something it's like that's all i cared about you Man. know and that's what i tried to carry over into my career i didn't want to be labeled as uh one particular type of producer i just wanted to be a music producer if it that's meant awesome. doing country or if it meant doing gospel if it meant doing hip-hop whatever i wanted to be able to merge all those worlds together and just try to write great songs and things that felt good to me and you you've know. been successful at it for how many years now? It's, it's been, you're yeah. still going, man. So that's a blessing. Yeah. And and yeah. just quick sidebar, you said MTV Day. Don't you miss original MTV? The yeah, old absolutely. school MTV? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's in the name of the group. It's in the name of the title. Right. Music television. But it's not music television music. anymore. It's like yeah, reality it's, garbage. Like, oh, it hurts me. Ugh. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, yeah. I, miss, I miss that era. It was, it was a way for so many people to be introduced to the world. Yeah. And... Um, so many different genres and like I said it I think it was it created one of the greatest eras in music not just because the music necessarily was better mm -hmm. but music was accepted from all different angles you know yeah. what I mean and to be able to see all of that and we not really have that now is, it, 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 it I miss it man hurt. I miss that man. era that, and the, the music just exploded there was so much different creativity happening at that time and we were Absolutely. able to see new artists explode on the scene I used to love waiting for the new video to come on you'd be like oh it's a new yep. video coming up from so and so Yep. Those days are TRL and all the yeah, Ugh. all of that man makes me sad. Yeah. Makes me sad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> makes me sad. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, okay. I had to just put that in because I felt like somebody yeah, yeah. else misses it like me. It's okay. Um, so, how did you meet Kenny Babyface Edmonds? Okay, because <coughs> you because um, you write with him quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Kenny and I have been writing together over 10, 12 years now. Um, I actually share a room at the studio that he built, uh, Brandon's way. Um, he actually has been there since the nineties, but, um, I've been there since I've been there over 12 years now. Um, but yeah, I met Kenny, um, we had off and on run-ins being in LA and around certain writing circles and everything. But at the, at this particular time where I built a longer lasting relationship with him was when I was a part of the underdog team, um, underdog music, um, uh, producers or whatever. And so we were actually working on a lot of songs for a potential album of his. And we, um, we did probably 15 records together. Um, and so I got to build a relationship with him and watch his process and of course record him and produce with him and all that other stuff. And so we just kept our relationship that, that long. And then it just turned into um, a mutual respect that we had for each other creatively. Mm -hmm. And you know, anybody that knows Kenny knows he's very much an introvert and he's, you know, to himself and quiet. And and for me, our relationship, I understood that from the beginning, but our relationship worked really well because I gave him and I get, still give him the freedom to do what he does creatively and to be in his own space when he needs it. Mm. And he does the same for me. And then when it's time for us to come together, we, we expect each other's gifts and let each other do what they do. Nice. And then when it comes together, fortunately, it works really well. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's been a great experience, man. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Yeah. And, you know, and people don't really, some people do, they don't really get how talented that dude is. I mean, oh, he's, he's, you know, he's from my is, hometown, Ohio. See, I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. He's from Cincinnati. I remember when the deal first oh, okay. came out, I was like, oh, that's that's the group right there. And I was like, yeah, oh, shucks. Yeah. When the yeah, deal hit, he, it was over. Yeah, he's amazing, man. He, um, 
music is just a part of his makeup. Like he, he'll go into the studio t- to this day at nine, 10 o'clock in the morning as if, you know, there was some urgency to him having to get something released. He does that every day and he's done it as long as I've known him. He'll go in early in the morning and you'll, you know, walk in the studio and he's already started working on some music and got some creative ideas going. And we've had a couple of times where we've done like some writing trips together and we'll just sit and write. We've written 10, 12 songs in a day. Wow. We'll write it and you think, okay, I have accomplished something. I'm done. <sighs> and then he'll pull out the guitar. I'll play piano and we're on to another right one. Back we'll at another it. one. Wow. Yeah. We're just, you know, building up catalog. So it's just been, it's been an honor and a privilege, but it's just great to watch someone as gifted as him. It's inspiring too, yeah. you know what I mean? To just be like, to, to know that there's no, um, with him, it's like, you don't have to look at it as, once I've made it to where he is, I've made it. Right. Because with him, he's always striving. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, he just enjoys the journey and, and he loves it just as much now as he did when he started 40 some odd years ago. Wow. And that was kind of something that I took on from him like, do it because you love it. Don't do it necessarily because you're worried about being attached to a check or yeah. anything like that. Just do it because you love doing music and let the music take care of itself. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And you hear my dog in the background. I've got like... <laughs> oh, it's okay. I barely heard it. It's no, like... My dog is downstairs barking at the door. That's what happens when you work from home, right? You, you just, but Yeah, exactly. I actually with... just put mine up, so yeah. I get it. <laughs> yep. So, man, you know, with all this you've done, when you're working, when you're creating, do you start with the piano? Do you start with the guitar? I think, can you start with the guitar? How, where do you start when you start creating? Um, it, it, can, it varies. So, and that's another thing I try to challenge myself with. I try to challenge, come up with different ways to start the creative process um sometimes it can be me sitting on piano or coming up with something like sample tank or whatever you know and going through and finding some inspiring sounds that will trigger something you know trigger something for me to get started sometimes it could be a drum rhythm or a syncopation it could be guitar you know sometimes if i'm writing with kenny he'll grab the guitar right away and you know i'll be like that's great let's work on that let's build from that and then a lot of times i'll sample what he's done put it in logic or whatever and nice. you know, build around it. And so we'll write that way. Um, sometimes it could be something as much as it could be a concept that comes to mind. You know what I mean? Like that's just a great, that's a great idea, idea for a song. Yeah. No, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's just a, you know, it's just a, a concept that'll come to mind. It's like, Oh yeah, I want to go ahead and write this, you know, write to this concept or this something, a conversation was said in a conversation or whatever. And I'm like, Oh, that would be a great title for a song. Or yeah. Whatever, you know? And you, I'm and always you writing in my and head. And you mentioned logic too, which mm-hmm. leads us into you know how technology changed the writing process. This is where we get the sample. Right. How did this? How's it? How's it change everything? I think it's been um, it's made it a lot more streamlined. You can get a lot more done with a lot less um, equipment. <laughs> um, you have the ability now to, um, you know, for example, prior to using Logic or Pro Tools or a DAW you know, um, pulling up a session in a studio could have taken two or three hours just for them to recall the old session um, prior to you even working. And now, you know, it's immediately pops up and flying vocals and cutting vocals the way you do or flying instrumentation, all that stuff is so much easier and more streamlined. Um, And you have a lot more sounds at your disposal that you don't, you didn't have to worry about years ago, you know, Mm -hmm. where having to bring people in and musicians in or um, creating your own samples, all those things used to take just so much longer that the process of technology is just, you know, has made all of that just so much easier to get a lot more done with a lot less at your disposal. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, yeah. So, so enter in sample tank, which is something you mm-hmm. found. How long ago did you find sample tank? Uh, I found sample tank probably maybe 10 years ago. Yes. <laughs> as you met me, right? Yeah. yeah it's been a while. Um, <laughs> You know, I was looking for, I, you know, I was familiar with some other samplers and I wanted something that I felt comfortable in that wasn't overly um, taxing on the creative process. You know, I don't like, I'm not necessarily one that spends a lot of energy on sound design. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it's like, I want to be able to pull up and recall a sound and it immediately spark an interest in something I want to do versus let me just go ahead and start to create this sound from scratch and see where it takes me. You know, which is a, an art in itself, but I'm just one of those people I prefer to just go ahead and have a great starting point. And then I'll go ahead and, you know, build around whatever it is that's inspiring me to write. So Sample Tank uh, fit right in with that. You know, the library is 
is extensive. It's got everything you need. Um, and it's easy to use. And so it was like, well, let me just go ahead and rock with this. And I've used it several on several records and several times and it's been great. So, so did it change your workflow as far as how you use things or, or do you start mm -hmm. with it, begin with it somewhere in that, ba in that space? Yeah, I think um, for me, it, it, I'll start, I usually start with sample tank. So like, for example, it could be me pulling up a particular, like I was saying, a particular sound or patch. And um, I might even layer it and stack it a few times with a couple different things together, you know what I mean? And just kind of seeing where it goes and, um, and then I'll build from there. And it's not taxing. The other thing that's great is it's not been taxing on my computer. So you're able to do a lot of different things um, with it not necessarily having to be so taxing, you know what I mean? And um, so, yeah, that's pretty much been what it's been about for me. So it's been great. And so now that you have it, and I'm checking my video feed here, it looks like I had a little bit yeah. of frozen thing going on. So I'm checking yeah, to see yeah, what's happening. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it back. Are we back in? Okay. I think yeah, we're, we're back. back. I, I there we go. Now we're yeah, good. Perfect. It's always mm -hmm. something, right? <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah, yeah, so being part of your workflow, you start, you begin with it, you end with it. What's your favorite mm -hmm. feature about using sample time? Um, I love layering, and I love the fact that I can – I love the layering features, and I love um, – the built-in, I really love the, the built-in EQ because that was one of the things like just being able to use the EQs and the compressor and the effects rack that had, that comes with it made my life so much easier because I would, I, I used to get frustrated at having to outsource for a particular reverb or whatever. When I, you know, again, I like to say, create, I want, I want to pass this already inspiring and being able to do all that stuff and then not have to be taxing on a laptop or, or anything like that. Say, okay, perfect. This is, this is what I use it for. And so I use it that's one of the main things I love about it is the ability to just stack and layer sounds and come up with some of your, some of your own unique things based off of, you know, this massive library, man. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, so you said the sound palette was amazing for you. Yeah. You know, absolutely. with so many sounds, do you find it easy to find what you're looking for? Cause I know with a lot, sometimes it's hard to get to what you're looking for as far as sound wise. Um, it is for me only because, you know, once you, after a certain point, you can start to know your library and you kind of put your library together. But one of the things that I do to stay creative um, is those days when maybe let's just say I'm not feeling inspired or inspired by writing a song or finishing a production is just that going through uh, patches and creating sounds that I can save for later. So I'll go through and have a favorites list of a bunch of things that I've created that could be like a piano and a string and a harp or whatever. And I could tweak it in sample tank and save save it as my own patch. And so when it's t those times when I do want to come back and just you know get to work and kind of start creating, I've already got a list of things in my palette that allow me to do that right away. Mm. And so that makes life a lot easier for me. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, here's one thing I've always asked a lot of my, my my VIPs that use sample tank. Some people will go, well, I just practice with it or just a rompler. But do they actually do the sound actually make it to the mix in some of your records? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Once I've created a sound that I love, I don't, I'm not one that's going to, I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time replacing a piano or whatever. You know, I just want to make it sound good. And once you understand the nuances of, you know, uh, something like Sample Tank and you understand how to get the sound you want, that's really the big thing. Once you understand the way you, the, the, the process by getting that sound and realize that you can get it in Sample Tank, it's like, okay, well, yeah, why not just use that on the record instead of going back later and saying, okay, I need to go through a hundred different pianos to find this one great piano that I already had from the beginning, you know? Nice. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing that a, a great rompler or a great sound engine has to do. It has to make it to the final mix. A lot of people absolutely. create with certain things, but then they'll, oh, well, I, wa I was just using this to scratch, but wait a minute, it's got to go all the way to the mix to make it really work right. for you, you know? Um, Completely agree. Have you suggested it to some of your team that, that, you, that you work with, that you work with? Oh, now? yeah. Yeah, the entire studio has it. <laughs> we all have it. Like, I, I mean, you know, and, and it's funny because I don't really have to. What, what ends up happening usually is um, once if someone walks by, like, for example, someone like Kenny, if he walks by and he's like, oh, what did you use? That sounds really good. What is that? It's like, okay, well, let me show you. And then you, next thing you know, he's like, yeah, um, he's on it. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and so he'll build that way and some of the other writers we've had do the same thing, you know? Um, so it's really easy for me um, because this, again, it's, it almost sells itself, <laughs> you know, once people, uh, once people get hip to it and really understand it and realize the learning curve is not long at all. Sure. It's, not, it, it's really not. So, um, but once they get into it, they realize that, you know, it, it can sell itself.
Well, like you said, man, there's so much going on under the hood with the, with you having to be able to uh, use the effects that are already built on board. And we added mm-hmm. the loop functionality, which has been pretty crazy, being able to just truncate loops and play them and trigger them off at every key. Right. I mean, there's just mm-hmm. so much going on. There. And that sound engine really is pretty powerful. I mean, you can go Absolutely. in and really make this thing sing. You can shape and mold whatever sound you have. And then right. just start with the sound palette itself. The sound palette itself Absolutely. is extensive. Uh, and when you add in all of our other sound workstations like Centronic and um, uh, the whole deluxe of that package, the Sample Tank 4 Max, which has a ton of products, and then a right. bunch of the new libraries we've come out with, like the EDM library, which just released a few weeks ago. There's a, mm-hmm. a lot of our, um, our drum libraries from specific drummers that have been out there mm-hmm. as well. So if you guys are looking for new sounds for that, look at our libraries on the IK website. There's a ton of libraries that go with the product. So it just becomes that workhorse that you can almost do everything out of, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a one-stop shop. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it, it becomes that space. So, man, mm-hmm. if, if you could tell anybody else out there as you work with all the IK products there, if we start to close, we always try to keep it about 4.30. Um, what would you tell them to say they could have, what would be their best, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Um, the best attribute for Sample Tank for them to go ahead and get it. Why do they get, why do they have to get it today? Okay. I would say this. If you're looking for a one place where you can do an entire production um, of a song, from start to finish, you don't have to leave um, with every potential sound palette at your disposal in one spot. You got to get Sample Tank. It's just worth it. I mean, you're gonna find like I like I said, anything you're looking for, you're gonna find it. If you're looking for some 80 sounding synths, they got it. If you if you're looking for some great strings, they got it. If you're looking for a great piano or Rhodes, they got it. Look, you want some great guitar samples or some great guitar amps, they got it. You know, and so it's 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 the one place that it's really like having a virtual studio within within your computer. It's just worth having. And I don't know what those people who want to bounce around and make your life more complicated. That's good for you. <laughs> good luck. But I don't like that. I like that, that make it easy, make it as easy for me to get from point A to point Z. And Sample Take does that. Awesome. Awesome, man. Thank you for sharing your story and sharing your experience with Sample Tank. We appreciate you, man. You've always been a great IK advocate. So we just want to make sure that you have what you need and and keep telling people about Sample Tank. Absolutely. uh, Is there anything we should be looking for for you or we should be supporting anything you're working on now that we can send our subscribers to check it out? Sure. Yeah, actually, I just um, so I'm in the process of wrapping up Tony Braxton's album, which will be out. mm, They're looking like the beginning of August now. Nice. I have a, there's a single out that, uh, that she did called Do It that I produced that's um, doing pretty well. Um, just got introduced a couple of weeks ago. Okay. So okay. Um, I'm working on that. I'm still working with uh, Kenny on wrapping up his album. Um, I have a couple of groups that I'm putting together, a solo artist that um, I just put out some stuff on. So um, artist named Amanda, her stuff is amazing. Um, it's, you can find it on Spotify. Her stuff is special. Um, and if someone wants to get a hold of you or wants to wants to learn about your work or wants to work with you, is there a number mm-hmm. they can reach or, or an Instagram or an, or an email? Yeah, they can go to Antonio Dixon Music. Um, A-N-T-O-N-I-O-D-I-X-O-N Music um, is my music web, uh, my music Instagram. Okay. And then just DM me. Um, one of the things I care most about, if you're, you know, if you're an artist, a potential artist or a producer or a songwriter, um, you can send me some of your music. Um, or you can DM me through there and then we, I'll get you the information on sending some of your music in. Um, and yeah, let's just get to collaborating and working. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, man, thanks yeah. again for stopping by. I'm going to reach out to the people on the other side and say, hey, now that you've heard how cool Sample Tank is, now you want to win a copy, right? Absolutely. Yes, you want to win a copy. So yes, you let's... Did. <laughs> <laughs> So if you were paying attention today, the way you can win a copy is to tell me two of the artists that I mentioned that he's worked with in the past. In other words, I mentioned four artists in the beginning when we started talking to Antonio. But all I want you to do is give me two artists that he worked with, and you will get a free copy of Sample Tank 4. Now, that's pretty killer just for coming yeah. by and checking it out. So we appreciate you guys watching and, and talking and just being a part of us. And hey, if you're out there, take care of yourself. Wash those hands. Be careful. And let's uh, stop the violence, increase the peace. So let's take care of each other a little bit. Thanks for stopping by, guys. And let's look for those names inside the chat. We'll talk to you soon from Defo's Audio Toolbox. Have a great one, guys.